Analysis of the Right Word by Imtiaz Darka for the AQA GCSE Literature Exam. The Right Word Outside the door, lurking in the shadows, is a terrorist. Is that the wrong description? Outside that door, taking shelter in the shadows, is a freedom fighter. I haven't got this right. Outside, waiting in the shadows, is a hostile militant. A word's no more than waving, wavering flags. Outside your door, watchful in the shadows, is a guerrilla warrior. God help me. Outside, defying every shadow, stands a martyr. I saw his face. No words can help me now. Just outside the door, lost in shadows, is a child who looks like mine. One word for you. Outside my door, his hand too steady, his eyes too hard, is a boy who looks like your son too. I open the door. Come in, I say. Come in and eat with us. The child steps in and carefully at my door, takes off his shoes. Okay, we're analysing this using flirts, form, language, imagery, rhythm, rhyme, tone and subject. And we start, as we always do, at the end with subject, uh, getting an idea about, uh, of what the poem is about, and then fitting in the form language into that uh, subject. So, I think that this poem is exploring the doubt and uncertainty of a post-9-11 world. Um, since 9-11, um, you know, the language of terrorism and terrorists, etc., has uh, been quite prominent um, uh, because of the, the attacks um, that are that have happened since then and, and happened on, on that day uh, over 10 years ago now. So this poem looks at uh, the, the legacy of that, I suppose, and specifically it looks at it in terms of language and uh, the labels that we apply and how they can um, they affect the, um, our attitudes and uh, certain identities. So in terms of form and structure, I've given you two stanzas there, and you can see that uh, there is a use of first person. Uh, the poet, the voice, is um, using first person pronouns. I haven't got this right. And also there is the second person. You see one word for you outside my door. Looks like your son too. So this use of first and second person shows, um, shows uh, a more immediate poem, I think. Uh, therefore, it is a, a direct address uh, the reader, so it's speaking to us, the reader, directly. And you can see with these two stanzas from two separate areas of the poem, are they not? Yes, they are. Um, we see that there are varying stanza lengths. So, how can we analyse that? Well, by using the first and second poem, addressing the reader directly, uh, it just really shows how the, the message of the poem is relevant to us all. Um, we, the reader, are involved in the poem, and therefore we are involved with the, the themes and the messages that the poem is exploring. This is affecting us. The poet makes that quite clearly. Your son too, outside your door. This poem, the message that is in the poem, is relevant to us as a society. By varying the stanza lengths, this helps to reinforce this idea of uncertainty and doubt, and we will have a look at this again in, um, in the rhythm and rhyme and so forth. There's no formal structure, and this really just uh, suggests an unpredictable kind of uh, format to the poem, a you know, structure to the poem, and you know, unfortunately, that is uh, the case of, a, of the global community in a post-9-11 age. In terms of language, we see there, I, uh, um, I mean, this is a poem that strongly uh, uses language. I mean, it's called The Right Word. Um, the poet is, and the voice, is desperate to find the right words to use. Um, and so language is, as it is in all poems, I suppose, but language is... is particularly significant in this poem. Um, it's simple, direct, you might even call it blunt. That first stanza, outside the door, lurking in the shadows, is a terrorist. It's quite blunt, direct, 
and straightforward. As the poem progresses, the language changes and the connotations of that language change from threat to um, vulnerability. Now, the nouns, the, the, the uh, you know, terrorist, freedom fighter, hostile militant that go through the poem that are used uh, to, um, to describe, nouns are naming words, they're not adjectives, are they? But the nouns used for the central image um, really shows the power of words um, and how they can affect um, our attitudes, our perceptions. There initially are connotations of threat, but as the language changes, the threat is removed. The poet um, Darker is exploring the lexis, the language. Okay, so that's a good word to think about in, in this poem, uh, lexis. Uh, so if you're unsure of that meaning, go and look it up. But it, it, generally, it's just talking about the language that we use. Um, the, so the lexis of the age that we live in. Um, and she's expanding upon a quotation from a novel called Harry's Game, which is one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. And through her changing language, she kind of explores that in, uh, in, in, that, uh, in greater depth. So the poet, um, through the language, she really is uh, urging the reader, forcing the reader to think about the labels that we apply through language. In this poem, it's in the uh, in the context of terrorism. But I, I think that actually, after reading the poem, you think about you, the power of language in all contexts. She describes words as wavering flags. Now, a wavering flag can have a distorted the image on a wavering flag blowing in the wind uh, distorts the image. And words can be distorted. The meanings can be distorted um, through our perspective of them, our view, our attitude towards them. So the imagery, uh, three quotes there, outside the door, shadows, and then comparing te the terrorist with the child. Um, there is a repeated image of a door, of a barrier uh, throughout the poem. And I think that this represents... Um, figurative barriers but also differences in the world. Shadows um, have connotations of threat um, and fear and uncertainty and the menacing images of the terrorists change throughout as we have discussed um, to an image that ev evokes sympathy in the reader. So this figurative barrier, okay, it's not a real door that the poet is talking about. It's a figurative door. It is a metaphorical barrier. Um, and it suggests security on the one hand, but also difference. Look at how it's, uh, the poet is describing what is outside the door. When you're inside, you are safe, you are secure, you are protected from the elements, you are, are warm and cosy, um, but outside there is no shelter, nor is there any protection. Um, and the shadows um, reinforce this sense of fear, and we have to protect ourselves by staying inside. And the, uh, the poet is saying how actually we are um, figuratively staying inside, staying within our own comfort zone, as it were, staying within our own sec secure area. Um, and the repetition of this image is showing how that the world that we live in today is divided and suspicious. The image of the terrorist, as we have said, it initially has connotations of, of, of danger, of threat, of menace, sinister. But as the poem progresses, the perspective changes through the right words or, or, or searching for the right word. Um, and that fear and, and threat is, is broken down. And so the poet Darker, she questions the labels that we use these words that we use and how they create identity, how they shape identity and how they shape perspective. Um, 
and, and she also challenges us to remove the barriers as we see um, when we get on to tone and look at the end of the poem by breaking down those barriers by removing those barriers we change our perception and we will also change the world we live in so rhythm and rhyme um, I've given you a stanza there is that the wrong description outside the door take shelter in the shadows it's a freedom fighter um, and as you can see there's no regular rhythm pattern throughout the poem there's and there's no rhyme scheme however that's not to say that we can't say anything about it um the lack of uniform rhythm and this uh, uh, and you know there's no pattern to the rhyme um just shows how that this is a poem about division and uncertainty and doubt um, we are in a divided global community and, and as a result that is unpredictable and therefore there is a, a lack of pattern in in, um, uh, in the global life as it were. We still might have our own personal routines but on the global scale there is this um, lack of structure and, uh, and, and pattern and unpredictable. It's reflective of how the, uh, the voice of the poem is searching for the right word. The voice is looking for ways of, of uniting different attitudes and resolving the conflict um, and the problems faced by our world. So finally we then move on to tone and I've given you a few quotations to think about in terms of the tone. Um, it, with the language, with the image, it changes. Uh, the poet is almost correcting. They're almost having a, a kind of argument with themselves. I haven't got this right. Is that the wrong description? The, these questioning, uh, the, these questions that uh, is throughout the poem shows that the 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 poet, the voice is is correcting themselves. Um, towards the end, we see this welcoming language, and oops. And then finally we see that it, a child steps in and carefully at my door takes off his shoes. So, the blunt language uh, menacing imagery uh, at the start of the poem um, creates quite a sinister tone, a threatening tone. However, as the poem progresses, the, the voice questions their own description and their attitudes, arguably, and wants us to do the same. At the end, the welcoming language, come in, I say, come in and eat with us, shows that the poet is asking us to kind of break down our barriers and, and by doing that offers hope. There is a, um, you know, there is a promising tone, a, 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 a tone that we can break down these barriers and by removing those barriers, we remove our differences or we accept our differences because being different isn't necessarily a bad thing but it, we just need to accept it and by accepting those differences we can bring a harmony to the world. <laughs>